Hey there, Eli coming at you again in front of the coral tables today to give you another episode of What is a Coral? I know we've already talked about Euphilia, but I wanted to talk today about the true Euphilia corals, namely the torch corals. Most of the corals that we do consider Euphilia in the hobby no longer actually belong to the genus Euphilia. A lot of your hammers, frog spawns, octospawns all belong to the genus Fimbriophilia, although they still belong to that same overarching family of Euphilidae that all of the Euphilia corals belong in. However, the torch corals and the Cristata torch corals are two corals that still do belong to this genus Euphilia and something that are kind of ubiquitous in the LPS side of the aquarium keeping hobby. I have behind me a handful of different flavors of torch corals. They come in a whole bunch of different colors and they may vary in shape depending on where they were collected with individuals coming from Australia, Indonesia, Malaysia, and a few other locations in the wild, and each kind of having its own characteristics in terms of the way their tentacles look, or how long their sweepers get, or the colors that they exhibit. But for the most part, these are all considered Euphilia glabrescens, which is the torch coral. And in recent years, these have been an increasingly popular coral to keep in the hobby, with some of your torch corals fetching very high prices on the market, depending on their colors. But generally, your prices for a torch coral are gonna range from anywhere around 80, 75 or 80 bucks, all the way up to 250 bucks, maybe even more for a single polyp. So there is a wide variety of price out there and it really comes down to rarity in forms of color and the like with aquarium raised aquacultured specimen usually going for a little bit more money than their wild counterparts. I have a whole bunch of torch corals behind me here. These are a very rewarding LPS coral to keep in your aquarium and as long as your aquarium is decently stable in terms of alkalinity, calcium, salinity, and temperature, these should be a fairly easygoing coral for most hobbyists. They are a true stony coral and they do generally branch and as much as a large colony might look more like a massive coral, they do tend to form branches of their skeleton with each head individually usually splitting into two, maybe three down the road, and they grow out in that manner. In addition to branching out from their individual polyps with polyps splitting down the middle to form a second, sometimes they will also sprout heads toward their base as long as they have nice and healthy flesh that is covering the skeleton. Sometimes you will see side shoots start from the bottom of the coral as well. In comparison to most of the other Euphilidae corals such as hammers and frog spawns, Torches tend to like the most amount of flow from what I have seen. They generally do appreciate indirect but decent moderate flow enough to get their tentacles swaying at all times. And oftentimes if they have a more random flow pattern in the tank, you'll get really nice long flowy tentacles out of this coral that will stretch quite far. As for aggression with other corals, torch corals generally do have a pretty potent sting. So keep that in mind when they do start stretching out those sweeper tentacles. Anything that is within that coral's reach does stand the risk of getting stung, and torches usually have a potent enough sting to win the fight against just about any other coral. As for placement with other torch corals, generally you can place them just about right on top of each other. Torches should always get along with other torches. However, they will not get along with hammers, frog spawns, octo spawns so they need to be placed separately from those other euphilid corals to make sure that you don't risk them stinging the others. Generally, placement in the tank would be around mid-tank. Sometimes people keep them in higher light, higher flow, so somewhere toward the top of the tank, but generally somewhere in the medium lighting, medium flow spot of your aquarium is gonna be appropriate. And if you do wish to acclimate them to higher light or higher flow, that can usually be done over a period of time. And as long as your parameters are gonna stay nice and stable, these should be a pretty rewarding coral to grow for you. And generally within about a year's time, oftentimes they're going to double or triple in size depending on the number of heads that you start out with. And as for hardiness with torch corals, generally your aquacultured specimen are going to do a little bit better in the aquarium setting. However, all across the board, the torch coral is generally a pretty forgiving coral, a decently easygoing coral, and something that is quite rewarding to keep in the long term in an aquarium. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you learned a thing or two in this episode of What is a Coral? As always, feel free to leave comments, questions, suggestions in the comment section below. And as always, keep on reefing.